Welcome back everybody to the channel. Today is going to be a quick one. We're going to use frame generator to make this trailer frame, just the, the extrusions itself. Um, there's two ways of doing this. And my preferred method is to have a sketch, a separate sketch in an IPT file, part file, and then uh, bring that into my assembly, which that's where um, frame generator has actually exist so you can do a sketch within there but if something gets hosed you can just delete the assembly and you still have your ipt file you don't have to redraw something or try to fix something it's just separate that's how i prefer doing that let's go over to uh, the sketch to save time i just went ahead and did the basic sketch and you can see the dimensions of if you pause the video if you want to make this yourself you can go ahead and do that so now we're going to go into trailer frame and this is an assembly and I'm going to do place. I'm going to go get that sketch and I always put it, place it at the ground at the origin. So if you mirror something or anything along those lines, it's just a good practice to do. So for here we have our sketch and you would go to design, do insert frame. And from here, you can see the parameters that we would use for this particular one, since I've already done it before, this is already bringing up the last thing that I used, which is a three by two with an eighth inch wall. So I want the this set over here to actually uh, be on top and you'll see what I mean. Now, obviously when I window that, it doesn't matter what the line is, it will uh, select that. So I have to deselect my references and if you go to the side, you'll see here's a sketch level. We don't want that. We actually want it on top. So I'm going to pick this because you can change directions inside, outside. But this is on, if you look here, this is the center of those lines. So if you wanted this to be the outside, you would actually select that particular one individually and then reorient it to the direction that you want to be. So we are at the bottom. Excuse me. Right at the top, yes. And then I'm going to say okay to that. Uh, let's just call this T for trailer. Now, when it does that, it comes up. Here's the frame names, the sizes, but it also gives the length. So these are going to be predetermined. This can change when you do trimming and whatnot. But this is the start of this. So let's say okay to that and let it generate that. Sometimes you'll see it flash another line that was not selected. It's not a biggie. Okay. Now we want to do the other portions. So I would go into uh, insert frame again, and I would go ahead and select these. Now this will probably be, yeah, you can see they're at the same level. It's an interference. So I would have to go there and sometimes it's a little weird to get it to select. Okay. Now it's at the bottom of that, and that's actually where those parts would be welded to the bottom. So let's say okay to that. Same thing. It's going to give you a list, and we're going to say okay. Okay, so now we don't have to have our sketch, so temporarily let's turn this off and start cleaning this up. Now, if you were going to do corners, a lot of people just want to have this butted up to this, but then if you didn't want this to rust in the inside or you're not running anything through it, you would probably cap it to keep it sealed. But for this, we're going to go ahead and do some miters on it. Hit the plus so you stay within the command. Let it finish. That's my last miter. There we go. Now we're going to go ahead and trim up all these. So do trim, pick that wall, and it always picks the wall that you want to do, your cutter, and then you can go ahead and pick multiples of everything else. Stay within the command. Let's go around to the other side. Let's do this back one. 
Now I do have one last thing to do for this particular setup. You can see at the bottom of this, since it's going from the center line, this is where it ran the extrusion. But I want that to be further so I have a little bit more uh, weld. So I'm gonna pick this in here because it's still in the trim extend, so we're doing the extend. Okay, there's our frame. Now, if you got this far and someone says, well, we need a little bit more strength to this, that's not a problem. So let's go ahead and just save this. Okay, let's go back to our sketch. We're gonna double click and go into our sketch and say I want to have a single line through here. So let's go ahead and add this. And I'm gonna do individual lines here. And remember, you have to do these individually because if I made one long line, it would see it as one tube. Uh, and this is easier to trim it up this way. Okay, dimensioning, and this is a common way. So we're going to pick this distance here. We're going to take the width of this and we're gonna divide it by three. That will put it even between here. And all I have to do is just select that one and we're done. So let's save that. We're out of our sketch. So let's go back into the assembly. Let's go ahead and turn our sketch back on. Now you'll see the other pieces. So the same thing you generate. Go ahead and pick these. Now you'll see the last positioning that I did for the front half. These are in the wrong position. So we would have to go into uh, this, have it reposition. So they're where they're supposed to be in alignment. Say okay going to give us our sizes, but those sizes are only for the pre-trimming lengths. So from here, we're going to go trim. Let's go ahead and turn that around. And our last trim is this one. Go ahead and turn off your sketch. So that's what we originally, picture we originally started with. What's nice is it doesn't matter what you lay out. If you need to adjust or add, you can do that. As well as the sketch itself, you can go in there. It, obviously it's parametric, so you can change the length of this. And because of the way I've done the sketching how it is actually being driven evenly and I'm using this number to drive these so they're even in there if I stretch this um, let's just for the heck of it uh, oh, wrong one let's do this let's say nine foot well it would help if I put foot and <laughs> not inches that was a little unusual okay so from there, if we save on that, we go back to the original frame and we do the update. Give it a second. It'll readjust it. So this is why you would use frame generator. You only have to do it once and it doesn't matter how many parts you put in. If it's already pre-trimmed, they're already pre-positioned, you have it made. You have no problem being able to adjust this. So there's a, a quick one on frame generator. I hope that was helpful and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.